Hi guys, welcome to Let's Get to the Marks. And what I'm doing now is I'm going through a few Hardy Weinberg calculations. Uh, this comes up in A-level biology. So OCR or AQA, these questions are from the AQA syllabus. So I'm gonna work through these. Okay, what do you need to know about Hardy Weinberg? Well, let me get my pen up and run in. Um, so with the Hardy Weinberg, the first thing you've got to know is uh, this off by heart is the equation. And if you're taking A level and you can't memorize this off by heart, you might as well give up now. No, seriously, get learn this. The amount of students who don't learn this and then they lose all their Hardy Weinberg marks and it's so basic. So P plus Q equals one, P squared plus two PQ plus Q squared equals one. Memorize that, please. What does this actually tell us? What is the Hardy-Weinberg used for? Well, Hardy-Weinberg made this equation and the equation basically states one principle. And that is that the frequency, so the amount of times that certain alleles, like here in this question, we have We have two co-dominant alleles, CG and CB, um, and they control for fur color. And what animal are we dealing with here? Squirrels. Okay, so we're dealing with squirrels, and these two alleles control their fur color. Now, what is P plus Q squared? Well, P, you can do this either way, represents, and Q represent the alleles. So, the alleles are represented by P plus Q. What have we got down below? We have a second equation. And what does that actually represent? Well, P squared is the fact that no squirrel will inherit one allele for fur color. It will inherit two. And if it inherits CG, CG, so homozygous for CG, we're using that P squared to represent that. And then the squirrel could inherit for its fur color CGCB or flip it the other way around CBCG. And that's the homozygous genotype. And we will write that here. Now, you don't have to write these out. This is just for me showing you what they represent. Whenever you look at the Heidi Weinberg equation, we use P plus Q, but it really represents whatever alleles you're dealing with in the question. So here it's CG and CB. And that leaves Q squared as the other homozygous genotype, which is CB, CB. So, and these tell us phenotypes as well. So they might not give you a genotype, they might give you a phenotype. And from that, you can work out what one you're dealing with. So the phenotype for C, this is gray. This is brown, black. And this one is black. Okay, so we've got phenotypes as well. And the bottom equation tells you the genotype and the phenotype. So it depends what they give you in the question. Why did Heidi Weinberg come up with this? And basically what Heidi Weinberg was saying or what this equation or principle is telling us is that the frequency of the alleles within a population, in this case, the fur color of the squirrels will stay the same throughout generation after generation after generation. And the, the frequency of the alleles will not change. There are a bunch of assumptions that go with this, like seven or eight. And that means that in order for the Hardy-Weinberg principle to hold true, you can have no migration, no immigration. Um, Mating has to be random, so no one's going, oh, I love a gray squirrel to have babies with. No one's saying anything like that. There's no selection whatsoever. And, as, and you have to be geographically isolated, um, no breeding between populations. And all of these assumptions are basically, in real life, they don't happen. So in real life, populations do choose who they're going to mate with. Um, there will be immigration and emigration. There will be members of the population leaving and coming in. And there will be random mutation. There's never really a population where there isn't random mutation. So all of the principles, they don't really hold true. 
why do we bother with the Hardy Weinberg then? Well, it allows us to look at a population and say, well, if Hardy Weinberg principle holds true, then we would expect the frequency to be this. And then when the frequency isn't that, and it's a little less, we can say, ah, oh, why isn't the frequency that? Oh, it's because there's been immigration in this population, or it's because there's been selection in breeding. So it allows us to make predictions and explain changes in the frequency of alleles. Anyway, let's get back to the actual question. Use the Hardy-Weinberg equation to estimate how many squirrels in this population had brown black fur. So they're really asking us how many squirrels are 2PQ, uh, which is the heterozygous genotype. And they've given us that two had black fur out of a total of 34. So they've given us Q squared. They've given us CB, CB, black fur. So we're going to find out what Q squared is first. That's the only thing we can do. So we're going to do two divided by 34. Grab the old scientific calculator. And we're going to go two divided by 34 equals 0.0588. Okay. Um, we can round that up to 0 0.059, but there we go. Left out of that. So now we know Q squared. So that is Q squared. What I want to do is square root Q squared, and that will give me Q. So I'm going to square root the answer, and that gives me Q. Q is equal to 0 0.24. Now I know that Q is 0 0.24. What must P be? Well, I can do 1 minus 0 0.24, and this will tell me that P is 0 0.76. So now I know what P is, and I know what Q is. I can now work out how, well, I can work out the frequency of the brown black squirrels. I can do 2PQ. So let's do 2 times 0 0.76, which is P, times 0 0.24. So if we go 2 times 0 0.76 times 0 0.24, we get 0 0.36. Okay, it's like 0 0.365. I'm just going to keep it at 0 0.36. What can I now do with that? Is that my final answer? This is one of the worst Hardy-Weinberg um, questions I've seen because it's only two marks and there are so many steps. Actually, if we just left it at 0 0.36, which is what a lot of students did in the real exam when this question came up, um, they would only score one mark. So. That's not the end of the question. It said how many squirrels. It didn't say frequency or percentage of squirrels. How many? We know the total was 34. So, of course, we have to do 34 times 0 0.36. And we're going to get an answer. Well, my answer is 12.4. How can you have 0.4 of a squirrel? You can put 12, you can put 13, you can put anything in between, okay? So that's the estimated number of squirrels that have black fur. Awesome. I hope that helped. We're going to go through a couple more of these. So you might want to grab a pen and paper, pause the video when the question comes up, have a go at it, and so forth. Right, let me clear this. Okay. Another question, just move my camera slightly so I can see what we're doing. Maybe I shouldn't write in such, um, let's write in black. That would be a bit more sensible, wouldn't it? Is this going to let me change my color? Yeah, of course. Okay. So first things first, Hardy-Weinberg, three marks. Ooh, that's definitely worth writing out the equation for. I mean, some of you won't bother writing the equation out in the exam because you'll think, oh my gosh, it's only two marks. I don't have time to write the equation out. You have always got to write the equation out. That took five seconds of your three minutes that you've got on this question. So let's go through it. Um, we can do the same thing if we want. If, we, if, if I want to take it the long route, let's take it the long route and just show you um, in the actual thing, once you've got used to doing this, you won't have to do this every time. Okay, I've got three genotypes, WR, WR, WRS, and S, WS, WS. So let's just assign these at the bottom here. We've got WR, WR. We've got the heterozygous, which is WR, WS. And we've got the 
well, there's no, we've got the other homozygous. There's no recessive here because this is another co-dominant. Um, this is another co-dominant one. So super duper duper, what is P and Q then? Well, P is W R and Q is W S. There's the worst R in, oh gosh, it's only getting worse. W R W S, right. What is the question actually asking us? Let's get down to it. 51% are resistant to warfarin. Are these two pheno genotypes are resistant? Well, the phenotype is resistant to warfarin. So they've told us the phenotype resistant to warfarin. They've given us the genotype of the resistant to warfarin. So we know that these are the guys that are resistant to warfarin. These are the ones that have resistance. They're, they're saying 51% is resistant. So I need to change 51 into decimals. We can't use percentages in the Hardy-Weinberg equation because it's all out of one. So let's change it there, 0.51. 51% have those genotypes, they're resistant. And the question is asking us, estimate the percentage of rats which are heterozygous. So they want that bit. So it's definitely gonna be less than 51 because the total resistant rats are 51. How many are heterozygous? So it's gotta be less than 51. Well, now we know that's 0.51, this, has to be 0.49. So if that is 0.49, we can now work out what Q is, and then we can do work out what P is, and then we can come back here and do 2PQ and get our answer. So let's get to it. 0.49, that probably will score you one out of the three marks, the examiner seeing that on the paper. You're then going to want to square root 0.49 to give you Q. And that will give you 0.7. You're then going to look for P plus Q equals 1. So 1 minus 0.7. Obviously, in an exam, you're just doing this in your head. There's, I'm just trying to show you. So P is 0.3. Lovely jubbly. Now we can come down and do 2PQ. So we go 2 times 0 0.3 times 0 0.7, and we've worked out 2PQ. And that equals, this is 2PQ, uh, equals 0 0.42. Now we need to change that back into a percentage, just times 100, that should be standard. And there we go. We have scored four marks, three marks, four. We got a bonus one, didn't we? Right. You'd get a mark for 0 0.7. You get a mark for calculating 0 0.3. And obviously, you get the important mark for the final answer. You'd also get a mark here. So you can, or here. So the maximum three marks. But for all of this working, you can get up to two marks without the correct answer. Okay. Now let's go over here, give two assumptions that must be made when using the Hardy-Weinberg equation. Those assumptions are going to be, uh, so no random mutations. I mean, in what population would you have no random mutations? Uh, no immigration, there you go, there's two. Uh, we can continue and say um, no selection in breeding. Oh, what's going on? Yeah, I can continue and say a whole bunch of others that go here. There's like seven altogether. So I can say no selection in breeding, no emigration, et cetera, et cetera. Hi, guys. Looking at this next question. Again, I've cut out bits of the question we don't need. This was unusual because this one was worth four marks. But when you actually do it, it's not very hard. So let's... Uh, Start with how you need to start every single one. And you'll want to pause the video and have a go at this. And then I'll go through it. And hopefully by now, you're smashing these out. Right. Humans have genetic resistance to infection. A recessive allele gives increased resistance to infection by the malarial parasite. In a population, 
Hi guys, back to another Hardy Weinberg equation. So let's get into this one. Some humans have a genetic resistance to infection. A recessive allele gives increased resistance to infection by the malarial parasite. In a population, the proportion of babies born who are homozygous for this allele is 0.01. Okay, use the Hardy Weinberg equation to calculate the expected proportion of heterozygotes. They love to ask this. So again, they want us to come out with the proportion. So they want like naught point, they want a decimal. What proportion are heterozygous? Well, they've just given us one of the homozygous. Now, was it recessive? Was it dominant? And does it matter really? Probably not. So a recessive allele gives increased resistance. In a population, the proportion of babies born who are homozygous further resistant allele. So the recessive one. That's going to be over here. So we now know we have not, their homozygous is 0.01. So they've told us there it's homozygous. I always use this for homozygous recessive. I don't think that was necessarily that important for you to know because they're working out the heterozygous. So we now take that back to Q. So we do the square root of 0.01. Remember, P and Q are the single allele. They are not the genotype, which is homozygous, uh, the heterozygous genotype. So, and they're not the phenotypes. Okay, so let's square root 0.01, and we get 0.1. So this means that Q is 0.1. We then use P plus q equals 1, to go 1 minus 0 0.1 equals 0 0.9. We know that p is equal to 0 0.9. Why am I writing all this working out? Because it says four marks. I'm like, wow, normally they're two marks. But we're going to pick up loads of marks here just for showing our working. So all we've got to do now is work out the heterozygous proportion. Okay, let's whack this in 0 0.1 times 0 0.9 times 2. And that equals 0 0.18. And that is so many marks, it is unbelievable. So what mark, where would we get these marks? Well, if you worked out that, that Q squared was 0 0.01, they'll award you a mark. If you then square rooted 0 0.01 to get 0 0.1, they'll award you a mark. If you then use the Hardy-Weinberg top line of the equation to work out that P is 0 0.9, you get another mark. And then for the final answer of 0 0.18, um, we get the final mark. So 0 0.18. Awesome. Hardy-Weinberg principle predict. This is basically saying, what is the Hardy-Weinberg principle? Well, the Hardy-Weinberg principle um, predicts the frequency. Now, you can say proportion, as in 0 0.1, 0 0.5, or you can call it a frequency, but I'm going to use the word frequency. Predicts the frequency of alleles in a population. And it says that that frequency uh, will remain constant. So it basically says the frequency of alleles in a population will remain constant. So it's really a two marker. What's the third mark for, do you think? It's for saying one of the seven things that are needed for the Heidi-Weinberg equation to be reliable. And for it to work, we need no immigration, okay? Um, no selection. Basically, the Hardy-Weinberg principle, ooh, knee selection. I don't know what knee selection is, but yeah. So basically, the Hardy-Weinberg principle, um, you need to be, the, yeah, oh gosh. The Hardy-Weinberg principle, restart for the 50th time. The Hardy-Weinberg principle relies on an unnatural situation where nothing that normally would change the frequency of alleles is there. So there's no mutations, there's no immigration, immigration, no random, uh, no selective mating and that type of thing. So um, there are no real populations out there in the earth that the Hardy-Weinberg 
principle holds true for um in all populations you're going to get some of these that will counter the hardy weinberg principle but it doesn't mean it's not very useful as we shall see from the rest of this question so the table shows the frequency of some alleles in the population of cats in three cities so we've got athens paris and london over here The frequency of the allele is shown here, or the proportion, depending on what word you prefer. So we have the proportions in each city of the different alleles. Okay, going across in rows in each city. Okay, white cats are deaf, right? Um, would the Heidi Weinberg principle hold true for white cats? So look at this. Do we think that the, the frequency of the white cat allele, the frequency that gives them white fur, will that hold constant? And that is that, like, let's just take London. London, the frequency is 0.004. Are we expecting that to go up or down? Or will it be hold true with the Hardy Weinberg? And in 50 years, will it still be 0.004? Well, if they're deaf, that may well affect their survival chances. And so, and also the deafness will probably not be selected for when it comes to mating, it's gonna mess up their mating rituals and things like that. So actually we would say, no, it wouldn't hold true because white cats would be less likely to mate, less likely to survive um, and so forth. So being deaf is a disadvantageous allele basically a disadvantageous characteristic so we need to put all of that down there let's look at c i'm not going to bother typing all that the video has gone on too long anyway what is the evidence from the table that non-agouti and blotch are alleles of different genes so what this means is they're saying uh what they're asking here is non-agouti and blotched yikes So if we just look there, what's the evidence that non and blotched are not of the same gene, i.e. not big T, little t, which would be two different alleles of the same gene? Well, if we look at the data for Paris, the frequency of non is 0.71, and the frequency of blotched is 0.78. Again, Hardy-Weinberg tells us that P plus Q equals 1. If I add those two alleles together, 0.71 and 0.78, we get a number bigger than one. So, um, for instance, 0.71 plus 0.78 is bigger <laughs> than one. Let's not try to write like that again. Okay, so that means they're not the same allele. They're completely different genes. Uh, if we look here, this would look like evidence because this adds up to just under one. So you might say, oh, but we've got this data from Paris and from London, where we can see that if you add the number of alleles together, the frequencies in that population is greater than one. So yeah, let's get on to the Hardy-Weinberg question next. Hair length in cats is determined by a single gene with two alleles. The allele for long hair H is recessive. The allele for short hair capital H is dominant. Let's get down to it with the Hardy-Weinberg. So we've got P plus Q equals one. P squared plus two PQ plus Q squared equals one. So we're gonna go through this now. So the allele for long hair, little h is recessive, big H is dominant. Use the information in the table and the Hardy-Weinberg equation to estimate the percentage of cats that are heterozygous for hair length. In which city? In London. Okay, so we're looking at London. We're looking at heterozygous for hair length. They've told us that the allele for long hair is recessive. So when I come to here and I go 0.33, that's my Q squared. Although you might use P, that's my Q squared, 0.33. They want us to find out heterozygous. So it's the old 2PQ again. So we just take that up to here. We square root 0.33 to find Q. Just square rooting that right now. And we get 0.57. Q is 0.57. 
we know then that P must be, <coughs> that was a bad attempt at muting. Um, P must be 0.43. So what is 2P cubed? We go, oh, I've left no room. We go 2 times 0.57 times 0.43. Not 0.49. And what did they ask for percentage or frequency? Estimate the percentage. So our answer for 2PQ is 0.49. We need to multiply by 100 to put in a percentage. It's 49% of the cats are heterozygous for hair length. Super. I hope that's helpful. I will do another video where I go through the rest of the AQA questions on Heidi Weinberg. There's about 16 questions that have been released in the last 20 years on the Hardy Weinberg. So um, I will go through the rest of them. That's another eight. I'll go through them a bit quicker, hopefully. All right. Take care. I hope this is helpful. Uh, you can use this to work through in practice. Let's get to the marks.